Good morning. It's Saturday the 24th of April. India's Supreme Court says the country is facing a national emergency as its healthcare system buckles under a second wave of coronavirus patients. Many hospitals are full. Oxygen supplies are desperately low and the number of new cases is spiralling. Let's take you through some of the latest numbers released by the Indian Health Ministry. The country has seen more than 346,000 new cases in the past 24 hours, a global record for the third day in a row. More than 2,600 people have died in the same period, with severely ill patients being turned away from hospitals. Previous peak in just a few weeks. We can talk now to our correspondent, Nikhil Inandar, who is in the state of Maharashtra, which is one of the hardest hit regions. Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, Indian Twitter, in some sense, has become a logbook of SOS calls, you know, appeals by people for beds, ventilators, uh, essential medicines for the treatment of COVID-19, as well as oxygen supplies as from countries such as Germany and Singapore. So hopefully in the days to come, uh, this will ease out the situation. For now, though, uh, it remains dangerously precarious. And Nikhil, um, what um, response has there been in terms from uh, the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who said uh, that they were looking at ways to help India, including by providing things uh, such as ventilators, as well as uh, prescriptive uh, drugs. Uh, We've also heard from the World Health Organization, which has said uh, that India's devastating second wave was in some sense a grim reminder of the kind of havoc that COVID-19 uh, is uh, capable of wreaking. Uh, the United States, I mean, India has been making appeal uh, to the United States to try and lift some of those bans on, uh, on uh, vaccine uh, raw materials. But the U.S. Uh, has said uh, that uh, for now it is going to be prioritizing its own citizens, given that it has... Uh, an obligation to Americans, so no help forthcoming uh, as of now from the U.S. Nikhil Inamdar, um, thank you very much. Talking to us from the state of Maharashtra, one of the hardest hit regions. The Prime Minister has been forced to defend himself. Again. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. 17 minutes past nine, time of day on a Saturday when we like to check in with two people we enjoy catching up with every Saturday morning. They help us understand the latest developments in the COVID pandemic. I feel like we need a drum roll now. Do we need some kind of a, a trumpets or something? We, it should escalate every time. They are, of course. We're going to see them. Virologist Dr. <laughs> Chris Smith, there he is. Good morning, Chris. Morning. morning. And Professor of Public Health, Linda Ball. Very good morning to you, Linda. Good morning, Charlie. Was that a sufficient introduction for you? I feel like, you know, it's this, I know you've been through this ritual before many, many times, but it's always good, isn't it? Saturday morning, we're a little get together. I think it could be better. Really? <laughs> what other plans that's, have you got that's then? Spoiled you them. need to up that... your game. Oh, Charlie does. Or are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we'll discuss. We're, 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 miss, we're missing the sun. It's sunny outside. It's not so sunny in here, but later today. Yeah. Okay, well, we won't take up too down, much of your time. Um, we'll just. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Let's get straight into now, it, so shall we? Um, look, Jackie, we've had lots of questions. As you guys know, this scene gives us some protection from COVID. Um, Linda, I'll put this to you. And there's also, there has been talk, hasn't there, about booster jabs um, coming out later this year? Yes, Naga, good, good question from, from Jackie. So in the original trials, looking at the data, particularly from Pfizer and Moderna, there's pretty good evidence that we know there's at least protection for six months. So studies, real world studies that have happened now, and we in fact saw some new results last week from people participating in the ONS infection survey. And that was looking at how much protection and the duration of protection after both the first and the second dose. And after the first dose, which let's remember, many more people have received in the UK than the second dose, and that was sustained at least over a 10-week period. So that kind of supports the UK's decision on the dosing regime. We, all, we don't know how long they'll work for. And that's why, as you say, there is discussion about a booster campaign. That may be needed if protection wanes. And it may only be needed for more older and vulnerable groups. We've already heard Pfizer and others discussing that. So we're longer. OK. And Chris, in a way that takes us very nicely on to uh, Denny's question all this mask wearing and it's worth saying so that's Denny's question worth saying isn't it people may have seen in some of the newspapers today there there is sort of uh, talk about the idea of by the summer well it's a dynamic situation and changes are being made based on where we find ourselves having implemented a change followed it up for a sensible period of time and then moved to the next stage of the roadmap 
So we don't know where we're going to be in the summer, but personally, I'm very optimistic and I'm not very low and that's good. Number two is that, as we've been hearing from Linda, the performance of the vaccines is incredibly good. Very low levels of virus in the summer will have the confidence that comes with having used and deployed these vaccines for a significant period of time by the summer will also have, and this is perhaps even more crucial, a very significant proportion of the population vaccinated by the summer at the city. All of this is going to give us enormous confidence in terms of, of how we move forward. Now, whether or not uh, we decide to abandon all these measures and when we decide to do that, oh, that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be a very gentle thing and it's going to be a personal thing. Some people are going to say, well, they feel more confident than others uh, and they will embrace some of the, the new freedoms, newfound freedoms uh, more, more, regu more avidly than others. Linda, um, earlier on we were talking to Adam Finn. It's not licensed for, un for 16s and under. We are going to give you this vaccine. We deem it appropriate. So at the moment, so many children are at home and they're not socialising and it's very challenging, Naga, so they're having to balance different risks to these children. Delivery of the vaccines is quite rare to children. The Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, of course, Adam is a member of that, have been very specific about categories of children um, who can be given the vaccine because the benefits to them will outweigh the disadvantages. But I think looking ahead, it's pretty clear that globally we will be delivering vaccines to children in the future. Pfizer and Moderna, their trials are well underway. I know the Israelis, of course, who've made great progress in their uh, program of vaccines and have had no deaths over recent days. Um, but looking longer term, the key point about children is that the trials will be looking at safety, even though the Oxford AstraZeneca trial, trial in children is paused. Um, and that's the key priority. But children we know move around a lot. They may play a role in transmitting the virus, some of them. And therefore, to protect others in the population, not just themselves. There may be an argument for vaccination, but it's a while to run until we're clear on that, particularly for younger children. How do we keep the UK moving without having another lockdown? And that, I think, for a lot of people is something they're just sort of holding back uh, in their thought process because we don't want to go there again, but things are moving and changing. The crucial element to the control of any kind of outbreak or disease situation is public health. In other words, a system of good quality monitoring and surveillance, testing, and then a plan in place for how do you react and react early when you see a tick or an uptick on the dial. We'll feel our way through this. There are various initiatives and manoeuvres going on now, aren't there, to, to explore the use of things like enhanced testing regimes, surge testing when we detect the emergence of a particular variant in a part of the country, testing people who are going to attend events to see if we can exclude people from the events who might be able to spawn outbreaks at those events. And that's why we need onward good, solid investment and support for, for the sort of job that Linda does in order to, to keep control of this. Well, nicely done, Linda. What have you got to add to that? Well, I mean, what I would add as a behavioural point, Charlie, is, you know, there's a large research programme called the Events Research Programme underway, and I'm sure you covered in your programme um, some of the football, the snooker, uh, they're looking at things with cinemas in Liverpool, nightclubs. People give informed consent to go and join those events, smaller numbers now, bigger in future. We're doing this gradually, easily, or, or gradually and cautiously. Let's not forget there's about one in 600 people in England still who have the virus. That's about 90,000 people people if you put it at a, a population level from the ONS infection survey. So it's not gone away, but we're trialing new things and we're trialing them to be able to open up as safely as possible. So I can think we've we've all got a lot, hopefully, to look forward to. Um, actually, wanted to pick up on something before we say goodbye. Um, no. OK, but Chris, you are now so attuned to Linda that you have a clock on... So what I did was I have created a Linda special clock if i just look over here you can see i've got linda uh -huh. uh, and i've given her her own time zone and i've even given you guys your own time zone as Thank well at media you. city so that you're not left out either so we have cambridge time linda time and media city time how do you yeah but if i'm going to meet chris we need to be at the same time so that's what that's what <laughs> That's what we'll be aiming for. I can't see that clock, but I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Is, it, is there something we need to know? Well, we're, we're well, thinking I mean, I um, actually we, we, we should pop up and see you once um, once the 17th of May comes and uh, and we can legitimately get together indoors. We, we should... Once again. Wow. Guests in person again. Yeah. We'll Not see. sure it's going to be that soon, but you again. Um, love our Saturday morning chats. Linda Bold um, from Public Health. Thank you very much. And Chris. Bye-bye. Of... <laughs>